Welcome to my tech one. In this video, I want to present my new testing equipment. This is a rubber rebound resilience elasticity tester. And this will measure one of the most important property of uh, TPU or other flexible rubber-like materials. I bought this machine myself. I got several requests from the pattern supporters when I test TPU filaments to use something like this. This would be a very nice uh, DIY project to make this kind of equipment, but I would run into the problem like I have with this uh, DIY impact tester, that if I want to write some scientific article, the reviewers will reject it because I use some DIY and not some industrial testing equipment. Now this channel has a sponsor, that's the Polymaker, but at the time when I bought this machine, it was completely founded by the pattern donations. It cost me $900, additionally $400 was the shipping from the China. I bought it directly from the Hongtou company, the same company where I bought that digital impact tester, which I will present soon. On eBay you can find these machines for approximately $1,600 and it still counts cheap because in Europe these kind of machines, of course digital, would cost approximately $10,000 or $20,000. This is analog and not digital, but for this type of the testing this should be enough. I will explain how it works and then I will do some testing because I have here different TPUs uh, with different infills and uh, I'm curious because this is first time I will test this kind of machine and I'm not sure what to expect here. Now I want to explain the testing method. Here we have this very specific hammer. It is based on ISO 4662 and it will have a start position and start potential and energy which is M multiply G multiply H and I will release it and it will hit the object and rebound to some other position and in difference in height, actually not the difference in the ratio, I can calculate how much percentage is rebounded. But in this case I don't have to do any calculations because this scale is already in percentage. That's why here we have bigger density compared here because here 5 degrees is not equal to these 5 degrees. And now I want to explain how to operate with exactly this machine. It is based on ISO 4662. The size of the test object is 29 mm in diameter plus minus half millimeters and the thickness is 12.5 plus minus half millimeters. In my case, since I'm usually printing with 0.2 mm layer height, I always set the thickness to 12.4 mm. First we have to be sure that it is completely leveled. The legs are adjustable and with open end wrench we can adjust the position and we have the leveler here on the top. This is the holder for the test object. It already arrived with this, I don't know, 2 mm thick rubber. But it is adjustable and it can accept the thickness between 0 and 60 mm. Let's place one of mine. This is the support for the test object and it also has a ruler on it. And with this here I can adjust the position. It must be positioned just slightly to touch the hammer. And the mass of this machine of 40 kilograms will also help with the stability. And then I can lock it here. When the test object is in the position I can prepare the hammer, but also the dial, pull it, twist it and it's ready. And when I release the hammer it will hit the object but in the same time it will lock this dial and pull it back to some position and all I have to do is just to read the value on the scale. Release lock the dial and pull it to some position. I prepared a lot of test objects, but first let's see the filaments which I use here. TPU for AMS by Bamboo Lab in blue and grey color. These are the hardest TPU materials I ever tested. And then 85A by Azure Film, this is the most flexible which I ever tested. And between we have this TPU 95HF by Bamboo Lab. And from basic materials I have this Hyper PLA from Creality. Polylight PTG, Polylight ABS by Polymaker, Easy PA Nylon by Sunlu, Pro PCTG by 3D Fuel, PBT Pro by CC3D, which is partly flexible material. Now let's see the test objects which I prepared here. This is TPU for the AMS by Bamboo Lab, one of the hardest TPU I tested so far, but I have here from 100 down to 20% default infill. And also for the reference I prepared here Jared 40% infill. Another reference will be also TPU for the AMS but in a grey color. These two should have the same rebound effect. And then a little bit softer, this is the TPU 95A. And even more softer, this is the softest TPU I tested so far. This is 85A by Azure Film. 
Just for fun, some basic materials, PLA, PTG, ABS, and nylon without carbon fibers, and a little bit exotic materials. This is PBT Pro, which is quite flexible, and PCTG, which is very ductile material. And for fun, on a late machine, I made something from the wood, just for curiosity, because I don't have any experience with this machine. And I know that video is very boring if I don't break anything. Hopefully this tool will break. This is PLA with 20% infill, but this one printed with the grid infill, and this one with gyroid to see any difference between the infill types. Let's start with the TPU for the AMS. It should be in the center. And my first measuring. 29%. Let's repeat this four more times. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Here I noticed the problem that the dial don't stay in one place, but it jumps a little bit back. So I analyzed the footage for the correct numbers. Not sure is it visible, but there is a small mark from the hammer. And now TPU for the AMS in blue color from 100 down to 20% infill. 100% infill. 30%, same like the gray one. 80%. 60%. 40%. 20%. <laughs> this is the same TPU but with 40% jarred infill. 25, no big difference between these materials, independent from the infill almost. And now TPU 95. 95. And now TPU 85A, which is one of the softest materials I tested so far. TPU 85. Oh yes. Let's check the repeatability, same material. Three times, very similar values. And now three basic materials, PLA, PTG, ABS and nylon. I'm not expecting anything special here, just for curiosity. PLA. PTG. ABS. Nylon. <laughs> Maybe this could be an impact test too, because for example on first three I can see that spot from the hammer but on the nylon, not. And now two exotic materials, PCTG and PBT Pro. PCTG. PBT Pro. Marks from the hammer are visible in both cases. They are very similar. <laughs> Just for fun, what can we expect from the wood? Wood. <laughs> not too elastic. And the mark is there, similar to those basic plastic materials. This video starts to be very boring, it would be good to break something, but I'm not sure after all this. This is PLA with 20% infill, but the top one is the grid infill, and the lower one is with the gyroid infill. PLA 20% grid infill. PLA 20% gyroid infill. I don't know, does it look like a break? I think it's damaged a little bit. Okay, does it count? Let's analyze the results. TPU 85A, the most elastic, it can rebound almost 50% of the energy. I was quite disappointed with the TPU 95A. I thought it would be better compared to the TPU for the AMS. And from the basic materials, this is very interesting. Nylon, look how similar it is to the TPU with the specifications. Not surprising with the wood. And this may be also interesting for the future videos to see how infill has the effect of the impact resistance. Conclusions. Well, if the material is elastic, then definitely it is measurable with this machine. Maybe I have to repeat the measuring three or five times for better statistics. Now, I don't really like that this dial don't locks in a place after this measuring. Okay. From the vibration, it moves maybe one degree or something like that. Theoretically, it is adjustable with these screws on the back side, but it will be good if it is already adjusted by the factory. Now, very easily I can convert it to the digital because I already checked on the back side, the shaft is rotating and I can glue the magnet to it. And on a fixed part, I can place the rotary encoder 
and with this maybe 10 dollars I can convert it to the digital and the accuracy would be much better and we don't have this vibration problem. The same modifications I want to do with this impact tester which I bought from the eBay, it is still analog, but first I want to finish the assembling and preparing of this uh, digital machine which I bought from the same home to a company. I think I will do these modifications but without camera because imagine probably even the review of this machine will get quite low number of the views but upgrading of it will get even lower. Maybe I will start a poll on my Patreon page if they vote for this upgrade to be visible then I will do it but otherwise it will be only my personal tech one. I will start a new playlist where all my testing equipment and methods will be explained one by one in a separate videos. And to all my Patreon supporters, a huge thanks for all their donations because they make this kind of videos and investment possible. And to all you others, well thank you for watching this video. Don't forget subscribe and enable that notification bell button too because uh, otherwise <laughs> notifications is not sent to my regular subscribers, only to those who enable that notification, if you like this kind of videos of course. And if you have some other experience with this kind of machine, then write me a few lines down in the comment section. And thank you for watching this video and follow me to my next one. Bye.